Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. So today we have our student, Dr. Vaishnavi Tigala, who matched into internal medicine. And she's someone who had to leave her home country residency midway. And then she overcame a lot of challenges as she was planning for the match. So let's talk to her and see what advice she has for other applicants. So welcome, Vaishnavi. Glad to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kira. And thank you for giving me this opportunity to uh, let people know about my journey and learn from my mistakes. <laughs> okay. I... So, uh, <laughs> let's talk, talk about your journey, you know, in brief, you know, med school, how you got started after that and residency and, uh, you know, then your transition to the U.S. So, as you already said, I'm Dr. Vaishnavi Tikla, and uh, I graduated from Gandhi Medical College, uh, Hyderabad, in 2016. So, my initial plans were to do a residency in my home country. So, I did. Uh, I was uh, doing my DNB medicine in uh, Hyderabad, and mm -hmm. I got married. So that was a sudden change for me after marriage. I had to move to the United States and uh, I started my USMD journey somewhere around 2018, ending in 2019, beginning. Yeah. So from there, it was uh, really hard to plan everything uh, to go to 2019 or 2020, 2019 match. It was really hard. So I just pushed one more year and I went for 2020 and 2021 match. Uh, one by one, I completed all my steps. The challenges which I faced during this journey was complete my step two and uh, CS because CS got canceled because of the COVID and the CK also got canceled because of COVID and it got postponed. Like, I was supposed to give it in March and it got postponed till May. So again, my rotations were, can uh, were getting canceled and everything was uh, not according to the plan. And then I contacted USMD Sardi. And actually, I was in touch with Dr. Kira since a very long time, uh, almost 2018 ending, I guess. And uh, he, he used to guide me. He used to always say that scores are important. And I would definitely say scores are definitely important. And um, when I called him in 2020, he told me I was about to give up because I was not having CS. And being a 2016 graduate, I don't think that was a reason that I don't have CS and ECFMD certification programs would even consider my application. So when I asked him, he said that it was not just with you, it was for with a lot of other students, they were going through the same phase. I think you should at least try this year before you give up. I literally took that word seriously because without him, I was telling my husband and my family that I'm not going to continue this year. Let me just complete all other things in my USC and research and let me apply next year. Mm -hmm. So I uh, that was really helpful for me, the suggestion. But what you gave me that day, it was really helpful. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, so cancellations and, and CS and all, how did you manage all this like last year? How did it all come about then? Was it tele-rotations, combination of tele-rotations? How did you prioritize everything? It was a hunt, that's it. I would say they email as many uh, doctors as possible and there will be few doctors who will really help help you out. I even asked you for uh, suggestions if, if it is better to get into tele-rotations or uh, directly uh, do some uh, on-site uh, rotations. I actually had a mixed uh, rotations, both tele and on-site. So. Yeah. I would say tele is also really useful because these days most of them are doing on call uh, in, um, anyway, yeah. appointments with patients and stuff. So you'll at least have an idea like how do you need to do and how confident you need to be when you're talking mm -hmm. to patients online. So I think doing both of them is really good. Okay. Now, uh, before we get into uh, you know the tips for other students and what uh, what you would advise them, you did get a lot of interviews, right? I mean, you really worked hard on getting those interviews. What were, what is some of the tips you have around outreach or interviews, uh, you know, getting these interviews that you want to share? I would say um, just follow Sardi suggestions because for me, I had literally no clue when I what I was getting into when I signed in for Sardi. Then I literally listened to what each and every step you asked me to do, the outreach 
and uh, starting my ps and cv on time that is really important to start them on time because you need to build up your cv you cannot it's not a one day or a two day process where you'll set a, a one overnight and just fill it and you can submit it so starting them on time is very important and um, um preparing for interviews is also very important so it is not even that is not a single day job you need to prepare almost a month or two to be confident from your first interview so yeah. you cannot you can for me uh, i matched into my third interview program so if i did take like uh, if i did think that my starting interviews were just mock then i couldn't have cracked them so no interview is mock if you want mock try try going to agencies for mock interviews but definitely not the main interviews right. right 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 okay um okay now uh, let's move on and based on your experiences uh and you know covid is still around and and there is flight ban things like that what would you advise other students who may be interested in applying this year and you know they are still debating tele rotations not rotations and things like that what is your advice to them how should uh, they plan their journey i would say wherever you are move from the place and start working in any hospital uh us gives you an opportunity it's it's not experience which you just do it in the united states anywhere in the world you work and that to covid is very important these days so try working in your home country if you cannot travel to united states obviously moving uh, coming to united states and doing rotations is a first choice if at all you do not have that opportunity then just stay back in your home country and try working and put genuine uh, experiences on the cv mm. because whatever you write on the cv they are going to ask about it you cannot just mention that i have done this i have done that and when they ask you if you cannot answer it and that is definitely a red flag so just don't do that and write genuine experiences i think that should be fine yeah no no that's a very good point because you know anything and everything on the cv is a fair game for question uh, in interview questions so uh, okay uh, did you take step 3 before you applied no i didn't take step 3 that is one other disadvantage i had uh, so taking step 3 and at least having a little experience in research so these were the two drawbacks which i had in my profile i would suggest the future applicants if at all you're an old grad even for that matter these days the trend is whoever completes step 3 let it be recent grad or old grad that is obviously a plus sign no one cares about the step 3 score but if it is completed or not completed i think that's making a lot of difference i see okay very good very good okay so now let's switch gears and talk about you know what you said about interview preparation how did you go about it i know we we did classes and we had questions so how did you go about preparing for the interviews preparing for the interviews it was totally new for me because in india we only crack exams and get into the institutions so there was no interview process that this interview season was the first interview season in my entire life i have never attended any interviews so i literally followed everything what you and my husband told me so he framed my answers when i was telling him my experiences he framed my answers and then i again came back to you people and asked if it was the right way to frame everything i wouldn't say that you literally gave me lines to speak but you made that framework which helped me uh, uh, be confident in whatever i speak so initially though my answers were a little vague you ch- you you made me uh, to a, uh, brought me to a point wherein i can i had a more uh, clear cut answers for whatever the questions they asked me right. and how important do you think is any kind of peer group for students so you know we have our own close group on telegram how important is this kind of a peer group for the match journey I think it's really important because uh, for us in uh, the telegram group was much more useful than any other classes I would say so whenever you have a doubt you can post it there and uh, you get an a reply immediately either from the mentors or the other students who are going through the same phase they usually reply and if you can even um, see where you're standing at, uh, at so if you are at a particular position so if 
if people are ahead of you you get that pressure <laughs> you know you need to do it the everyone else is ahead of you and you need to do it so if you do not have the peer group you you never know who is what people are doing and what you are supposed to do yep yeah yeah it is helpful definitely helpful good 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 well this is this was excellent any any other tips for applicants who may be uh, you know applying this year anything that we missed i would say just make a framework so without that i wouldn't say just write a particular date and you have to be done by that but at least have a framework if you are want to go to this year's match make sure that you go to this year's match and not next year or the coming year match so have that timeline and uh, make everything fit under that those timelines it's okay if you miss one or two in those timeline but at least make sure that you have uh, you follow the timeline and make a good cv and ps by the end of the day Yeah. so never neglect your ps so that is very important most of uh, in the interviewers asked me what what i have mentioned in the ps so oh okay very very important oh so the ps there were you know, discussions around your ps a lot of a lot of discussions out of most uh, out of my interviews like 25 i had at least 15 to 16 people ask me about only my ps not anything else they asked me so you uh, you mentioned that you left your residency so how did that must be really tough for you and all such questions so it i mentioned that in my ps so everything was related to that so how important or how useful you you think was whatever experience you got in india as part of this uh, you know residency that you were doing because by any stretch getting 20 plus 25 plus interviews is a huge achievement did that play a role you think you know the home country experience i would definitely say yes because uh, there was this one interviewer who mentioned that you have a home country residency and you have a older graduation so i think you should he he asked me to personally email all the program directors saying that i have a home country residency and uh, that is the why uh, that is the reason why my year of graduation is a little older so i think that really helped and one thing which uh, that helped me is the conference which it gave me when they asked me about the medical knowledge i had already experience from the home country residency so that helped me that way wow wow yeah this is this is you know a big achievement visa seeking 25 plus interviews this is this is huge and you really put in a lot of effort given the all the things that were happening last year around covid i i think you you, you should be very proud of yourself for the all the hard work you put in i would just say thank you to you you helped me i would have just quit by saying that no cs no ecfm certification let me try it next year but no i you gave me that encouragement i, I would say a half of the credit goes to your team for me getting uh, 25 interviews for sure wow well thank you very much and good luck for your journey thank all you all the best and uh, keep in touch yeah.